The two mods that I have been enjoying together for several days now for Halo the Master Chief Collection on PC are named Halo 3 Revival, created by Funny Anyway, <laughs> and the ever popular Halo 3 Ruby's Rebalance, created by Ruby of Blue. Both mods are downloadable on the Nexus Mod website. These mods work in tandem so well. One important note is that the Halo 3 Revival mod is only for the first four levels of the Halo 3 campaign as of now. As you can see, there are new encounter locations with the Covenant, and that is thanks to the Halo 3 Revival mod. The other changes is what most of you probably clicked on this video for, and that is the third person view. I must admit, I was a bit hesitant playing Halo in third person, but it is amazing how smooth it feels when transitioning from first person to third person. Playing Halo 3 in third person reminds me of an old school third person shooter, vacant of any gimmicks like snapping into cover and using particular buttons to shoot from whatever object you're hiding behind. Sure, there's a time and place for those kind of fun games, but that simple seamless flow of action found in Halo 3, powered by Ruby's rebalance of Halo 3, surprisingly feels great. But I believe the big factor that contributes to better gameplay when using these mods is in the tweaked weapon damage found in Ruby's rebalance. Check out the splash effect here compared to the Halo retail version for the assault rifle. We are talking 7.62 rounds for the assault rifle after all, and Ruby's rebalance makes the assault rifle when firing sound extra beefy. Battle is over. I've always felt like the combat flow in Halo 3's campaign for the retail version is too conservative, too pristine, and not hazardous enough. It feels too balanced to be in the player's favor, and Bungie's solution to that is allowing the player to activate skulls on legendary difficulty if they really want a challenge. Well, call me a picky consumer, but I don't feel like activating skulls that diminish my heads up display, promote all of the enemies, and have them throw a limitless supply of grenades to be really lore friendly. Activating all of those skulls didn't seem to utilize all of the assets that we have seen before in the Halo world. I'll be fair and consider the limitations of the Xbox 360 at the time to be what prevented us from experiencing a gameplay flow found in these two awesome mods. Here in one of the skull locations, I have picked up the Magnum that looks to be the Halo 3 Magnum, but it's really powerful, though it has a slower rate of fire compared to the Ruby's Rebalance Halo 3 Magnum. With 96 rounds on pickup, it will certainly settle the score. To reiterate, the Halo 3 Revival mod is the mod that allows you to see in third person. You cannot toggle between third person and first person view, rather it depends on the weapon that you are wielding. Ruby's Rebalance is what makes many of the weapons we are used to seeing in Halo 3 behave in a more effective way. When dual wielding, the weapon combination is true to itself in Ruby's Rebalance, meaning two of the same weapons equals double the damage. In Halo 3's retail version, when dual wielding, each weapon produces less damage. So I never really cared to dual wield much in Halo 3. But shredding into the Covenant with two times the power in third person mode brings a fresh image and a new gameplay feel to the Halo 3 campaign. While the friendly AI is more abundant and competent in their weapons, so are your foes. Therefore, dual wielding is a viable option when you want to turn up the heat a bit and be more aggressive. Speaking of being aggressive, the battle rifle with these two mods installed makes you feel like there are two methods in order to utilize the battle rifle. To me, it feels similar to the SOCOM Navy SEAL games that came out in the early 2000s. You can be quick and aggressive up close with the battle rifle when going up against unshielded enemies, but because of Ruby's rebalance, there is a decrease in the battle rifle's bullet magnetism. Therefore, when you are approaching a compound or any location with brutes who are shielded, you need to be more careful with how you use your battle rifle at medium to long range. You cannot use the battle rifle scope with the Halo 3 Revival mod installed, so these two mods demand more of a challenge when using the battle rifle, and it prevents the player from just reverting to using the battle rifle and Covenant Carbine only. In the Halo 3 retail version, it seems like the other weapons are overshadowed by the Covenant Carbine and the battle rifle, but not anymore, not in this mod. The only thing worse than Jackals are Jackal snipers without that purple light for their eyepiece, <laughs> but really, that purple light that helps identify the Jackal Sniper's location in Halo 3 for the retail version is a bit odd. Why would a sniper ever have something that high profile? They wouldn't. 
So for the sake of the jackal snipers, the purple light is gone. However, the plasma trail from that beam rifle being fired at you, I believe makes quickly searching for those jackal snipers before they fire at you again, kind of fun. It adds a bit more desperation, especially when you consider the distance the enemy AI is willing to fire at you and your allies from. The brutes will use their spiker in controlled bursts from a longer distance than the retail version, and so will the rest of the Covenant forces. So throwing in a few jackal snipers does change up the gameplay a bit more, without the game losing any flow in combat. As Jason Jones, the previous project lead for Halo, said, that snipers are like bacon. They make anything better. Thanks. Oh yes, now we move on to playing as a UNSC Marine in the Halo 3 Revival mod. You will see more of me playing as a UNSC Marine in third person here soon, but for now, I feel like showing you the first person view when entering a Warthog's gunner seat. I think it's great to see the increase of UNSC Marines and ODSTs, as well as the Master Chief in this section of the level that you will depart with. Keep in mind Ruby's rebalance mod has increased the Warthog's speed and acceleration to fit that of a Lamborghini, it seems. All vehicles have a boost in their speed, but are also more grounded with a slight increase in gravity. It's all for the better. But man, I mean this is quick. Though what is even quicker is when you get killed playing as a UNSC Marine in the gunner or passenger position on heroic or legendary difficulty. It's also not the easiest to shoot the enemies from the turret or passenger side, so I clearly see the benefit to third person view in the retail version. The best method here is, you guessed it, driving the Warthog yourself. Though in this case I chose the Transport Hog, and an AI Master Chief was in the passenger side, so I felt pretty invincible. He gave me hope. If you ever wanted to experience Halo 3 firing on all cylinders with its gameplay, then Ruby's Rebalance is where it's at. If you want to play as a Marine in the UNSC in third person mode, for an extra challenge, and from a different perspective, it's the Halo 3 Revival mod. Utilizing certain firearms when playing as a UNSC Marine is going to challenge you in a good way. Despite its changes, the battle rifle is still easy to use if you have enough experience and you're a good shot. It's not expected someone who just bought Halo 3 for PC is going to start downloading mods like this willy-nilly. I wouldn't say it's the best introduction to the Halo 3 campaign. Playing as a UNSC Marine, you will have to accommodate for the animation to play through if you throw a grenade. You'll find out the movement is different as well. When playing as the UNSC Marine, if you hold a firearm that has you in first person mode, you will notice the muzzle flash and the hands do not connect with the weapon appropriately. But updates to the mods are always possible. These type of mods are so welcoming, as we have been stuck with playing the retail version of Halo 3 for well over a decade. While Halo 3, on its own, no mods included, is a fantastic game, I always felt like something was preventing the campaign to reach its full potential in combat encounters. Now, there is more AI on both sides, allies and enemies. The third person view feels not just acceptable when running on foot, but refreshing in its own way. I don't expect any future Halo retail versions to include a third person view when you're running on foot, and I'm okay with that, keeping Halo as a first person video game, and then letting the modifiers go to work to bring about a new perspective to the community in their mods. Let's keep in mind Halo was going to be a third person shooter when it moved out of its real time strategy phase back in the late 90s and the early 2000s. Supposedly it went back and forth from third person to first person, but perhaps those early blueprints of the Halo engine is why it feels natural to play Halo 3 in third person mode. I played this particular encounter multiple times because it is so much fun and I wanted to try out the different weapons to take out the Covenant. There is a modified Goss turret behind me in one of those structures that can be great for taking out the Phantom and will especially be useful on Legendary difficulty as this was on Heroic difficulty. The amount of AI on screen in this video makes me think that the Xbox 360 version of Halo 3 would have been probably pretty unpredictable in remaining stable if this was the encounter in the retail version. Since the Xbox 360 was susceptible to the Red Ring of Death, the Xbox 360 probably would have gone airborne before blowing up if it had to make this encounter work in the retail game of Halo 3. 
I know this section of the level will be one of the favorite encounters for those who play these two mods. You don't feel like a lone wolf fighting hordes of Covenant. You are instead just a small part in a huge war. What is also really cool about the Halo 3 Revival mod is that there are many UNSC Marine models you can play as. I myself really like this one for the fact that he dons his helmet. That awesome defense encounter on foot precedes a fun and violent vehicle encounter where Ruby's rebalance starts to show off again its vehicle changes. Just give your passenger a fuel rod and perhaps equip one for yourself and let the green explosions commence and the bluish purplish explosions. If you've played Halo 3 enough, you will notice the vehicle changes right off the bat, yet there is still a good balance so you're not getting destroyed too quickly by enemy vehicles. Another change you'll notice immediately is when you find an attractive looking Red Covenant Carbine on the ground, although it is not a Covenant Carbine, instead it's named the Shard Rifle. Like the Battle Rifle, it fires a 3 shot burst and each burst feels very solid. I think it's the most fun when used against airborne brute units, and seeing the shards impaled in the Covenant foe is very satisfying. The Brute Rifle comes into play as well with a 3 shot burst. I wouldn't underestimate this thing. It can be very effective against shielded enemies, but if you overheat the weapon, then it punishes you with a considerable long cooldown duration. A nice touch is fighting alongside the Master Chief, who does hold his own, as he should, even when controlled by AI. But something tells me the AI is kinda amplified a little to behave a little bit like us in multiplayer. All right, Chief, let's finish this level. Before I close out this video, I feel it's right to mention Bunker Jeremy's ODST vs. Elite's Mombasa beta mod again. I made a video about this mod found in the description of this video and a link to his mod, but I had just wish I had included this section of the mod in that video. In the level named Data Hive in Halo 3 ODST, just after the police officer gets surrounded by Covenant drones, you continue through the tunnels and you run into a few Covenant units with a few brutes. There are elites in this section of the level that will turn on the brutes unless they determine you are more of a threat then they'll just start chasing you. The aesthetic of seeing the elites with their ominous glowing energy sword in this location, it's cold, it's dark, is such a great place to spawn them. It was such an awesome decision for Bunker Jeremy to put these elites in this part of this level. Great touch. Links to the mods seen in this video will be found in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next videos.